Hello, Dave Moore here. Been in the decorative flooring business since 1981. One of the things I found out to be imperative if you're doing floors, epoxy, polish, or whatever, is you need to do a simple pH test. And a lot of times I do this in front of the customer because of um, it just makes you look more professional. You're testing their concrete in front of them. It's just a job walk, but it's it's harmless to do. Uh, these are eight dollars, a little over eight dollars on Amazon. First thing, okay, they say use distilled water with when you test. Okay, distilled water is supposed to be a seven. But I tested this distilled water. and I tested it against regular purified water. Now letting it sit in there for a minute, here's what I found. I've got a six for the distilled water. The purified water is seven. So it's real important to use the uh, proper water that's a seven so that you get a proper reading. So I'm gonna put, then get rid of this distilled water. I guess we'll probably drink that or something. But to do the test, Put down a little quarter size drop. Now the reason why I'm doing this in two in two areas, this has been ground down a little bit, okay, to get into the interior of the concrete. This has not been touched. There's carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, which causes the high pH of the concrete surface to create a carbonic acid, which lowers the pH. So end up uh, nine, eight, could be a seven, six, uh, because of the carbonic acid um, at the surface. Um, you grind in a little bit and you should end up with a higher pH anywhere from eight to twelve. Okay, and that is concrete pH neutral, that, that range. So, but if I show up on a job site and I test the concrete and all of a sudden it turns 12, 13, 11, something like that. That's a quick indication that salt's been driven to the surface and you probably have a moisture problem. If I test it and it's a three, four, five, somewhere in that range, you might have a carbonated slab. Carbonation is caused from carbon dioxide being brought in with the bleed water due to fossil fuel equipment, typically where they're pouring in shells in the winter and the bleed water pulls in the carbon dioxide, creates carbonic acid into the interior of the concrete, and that concrete will eventually um, destroy itself uh, because of it. So, let this sit on here for about a minute. This is sitting there at a seven. And here we're higher, just about a, a nine there. So this is this is just a concrete slab that of a piece of concrete that's been sitting out outside. Um, so it's, it's not in a position to pull in moisture from the bottom like a like a slab. But I still ended up higher where I ground into the interior. Now why is it important to pH everything? Okay, just like I demonstrated that the still water wasn't a seven. The pure water was. You also, if you acid stain floors, people go, I don't know why my sealer turned white. I don't know what happened. It must be something wrong with the material. I put baking soda on it, and the baking soda neutralizes it, and, you know, and, and there's a conception that you're supposed to bring it to a seven. Uh, pH neutral uh, for concrete is nine to 12 or eight to 12. So, how do you know that just because you put baking soda or some 
something to, to, to hire the pH after you did it. How do you how do you know you really did that? You got to have one of these. Okay, going through the motions doesn't mean you actually did something. I've been only in projects where we tested it and we had to do it again. I've had it where we um, used a caustic soda degreaser, went too high, so we had to rinse the floor. If you don't do this simple test, you have no clue, period. And that's why I'm making this video because there's so many people posting stuff that, um, you know, oh, you know, this all happened. Uh, first, my first question is, did you pH the concrete? And all I get is crickets because they don't even have one of these easy to obtain $8 test kits.